Hello and welcome to the financial year 2021 figures for the EDAC Engineering Group AG. These figures have already been presented earlier this morning by our management. However, if you have not been able to attend, this is your chance to get a quick summary. By way of introduction, I am Sebastian Lehmann, Head of Investor Relations here at the EDAC Group. Before we get started, as always, please carefully read the legal disclaimer. And then we're gonna start with an overview on our current market environment. Normally at this stage in time, I would have presented to you the IMF projections for the current year. The IMF projected a growth of the global economy of 4.4% for 2022. However, with the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, these figures have been jeopardized. So currently this war is of course overshadowing everything and this is the main factor of uncertainty for the global economy. Moreover, we see a continued supply chain disruption, not only here in Europe, but all over the world. And finally, the inflation, and of course, a potential slowing growth in China might put additional pressure on the global economic development. On the other hand side, there are of course, some opportunities. First of all, the easing of restrictions from the corona pandemic here in Europe, but also in the US, will help the economy to recover. Moreover, if we look into Germany, the German manufacturers were posting the highest order books ever recorded at the beginning of this year. And finally, we are in the midst of a transition and a change toward a sustainable and circular economy, which requires enormous investments. How big they are, we're gonna see that for our industry at the next slide. Global car sales volume is expected to grow for this year. Although this figure might slightly change due to the war in Ukraine, there is a growth projected for 2022, but more important for us as an engineering services provider is the second line, the automotive spending on research and development. These spendings are expected to be around 220 billion euros until the year 2026. And these huge amount does not even include the investments into production facilities. As you may know, the mobility industry is currently undergoing a fundamental transformation towards a electrified, a connected, user-centric, software-defined, and overall sustainable future. And this transformation requires very large investments. We as ADA Group, we are an innovative, agile, and globally active engineering service provider and we are absolutely sure that we can benefit from these trends. Why are we so confident at this point in time? First of all, we have seen over the current two years that we can manage with challenges, that we can cope challenges, and that we can come out from these challenges with even stronger structures. And in, in detail, I'm gonna show you at the next slide why I'm telling you this. At the end of 2022, we gave out three key activities for the year 2021. First of all, when our CEO, Cosimo De Carlo, joined our company in 2018, he gave out the target that we should achieve 40% of international revenues by the year of 2021. In fact, we even overachieved this goal. Last year, our international revenue share was up to around 44% of our revenues. And the year before it was 39%, so we dis disproportionately grew internationally, especially with new customers coming from all over the world. The second target was to leverage our software and digitalization organization. As we have communicated last year, this is a new organization within our three segments. It's an overarching organization, and we put all our competencies and capacities in software and digitalization under a unified leadership. So we are offering a seamless product portfolio to all of our customers at the first step here in Germany. Last year, this organization grew by around 25%. So also this target has been achieved. And finally, over the last two years, we put a big focus on cost and profitability. We have already implemented a big measure of savings in the year 2020, which helped us a lot last year. Moreover, the team around our CFO, Holger Merz, put enormous efforts to keep the costs under control. Overall, we managed to become profitable at a much lower revenue base. So 
Concluding, we have delivered what we promised last year. In some cases, we have even over-delivered. This is why we are extremely confident at the moment and looking into the future with a lot of confidence. But now let's go into the key figures for the year 2021. As already pre-announced at the 21st of February, our revenues were up by around 5.7%. Looking at the three segments, you see that all of the three segments were contributing to this growth. Vehicle engineering, our biggest segment, grew in line with overall revenues by 5.4%. Electrics Electronics was outperforming the other segments with a growth of around 12%. This is mainly because of all the trend topics like electrified, connected, and intermodal mobility. Finally, Production Solutions, after two very challenging years, managed to grow at least by 0.4%. Let's come to the adjusted EBIT at the next slide. The overall adjusted EBIT surged by around 35 million euros to a total of 30.6 million euros. The adjusted EBIT margin for the group leveled at 4.5%. Looking at the three segments, we see that vehicle engineering and electrics electronics managed to increase their adjusted EBIT significantly, and they are both posting a robust margin. Production solutions is still a little bit behind. However, also production solution managed to reduce the loss. And moreover, in the first half of the year, this time was extremely impacted by, at the first stage, the corona pandemic in Germany, and then the cyber attack that we suffered at mid of March last year. The second half of 2021, production solutions was already profitable, so all three segments are clearly on a good way towards the future. Let's look at some other key highlights of last year's financial figures. First of all, let's start at the upper left section, the headcount. As you see, year over year, headcount has been slightly reduced by around 104 people. However, since Q3 last year, we have started to hire talents again. As we see that the overall market is recovering, we are hiring and we are still in a hiring mode. Currently, we do have around 1,000 open positions in our company. Looking at the CapEx, it was up to 18.7 million euros, but still somewhat below our targeted investment corridor of three to 4% of revenues. The really good news is at the upper right section, you see that the earnings after tax surged by around 35 million euros. And with this, we did not only manage to become profitable again, moreover, this EAT is more than 50% higher than the EAT in the pre-crisis year 2019. This, together with the positive outlook for the current year, uh, leads to the conclusion that our board of directors will propose the distribution of a dividend of 20 cents per share in our annual general meeting in June this year. Finally, a quick view on our equity. This is also up by around 40 million euros. The equity ratio is currently 16.6%. Looking into our net financial debt, you see um, several pillars here. The left pillar is always the net financial debt, including leasing liabilities, according to IRFRS 16. The right pillar is excluding leasing liabilities. So at the end of last year, the net financial debt, including leasing liabilities, was at around 135 million euros. If we deduct the leasing liabilities, you see that there was no financial debt. It was, in fact, a net financial asset of 12 million euros. So summarizing, at the end of last year, the EDA Group was on a very strong and solid financial basis. Moreover, we had more than 100 million euros in available credit lines. This all gives us a lot of financial flexibility and headroom for all the challenges, but also opportunities that lie ahead of us. So let's go into the outlook for the current year. First of all, I'm going to present you the key activities that we have for this year. This year, we're going to focus on five key activities. The first one is, of course, a further revenue growth. We're going to focus on the markets US and China. And referring our customers, we are focusing established OEMs in Germany, but also abroad. Moreover, our segment production solutions will continue to grow with industrial customers outside the automotive industry. Second point, efficiency. Cost control especially in these volatile times, remains of utmost importance. We will put every effort to keep the costs under control. 
Moreover, we want to increase our efficiency, for example, by the use of digitalization tools. This brings us to the third point, software and digitalization. As told before, this new organization has been active mainly in Germany. We're going to roll out this new unit internationally in the current year, and we're going to build up capacities uh, of people in best cost countries. We are especially focusing Malaysia, where we're going to build up a few hundred people over the next few years. The fourth point, this is sustainability. And when we talk about sustainability at the EDA Group, we always have to divide into two parts. The first thing is our internal sustainability. We, as an engineering services provider, do not produce any parts or goods. So our CO2 footprint is quite limited compared to a producing company. However, we gave out strict emission targets and we were gonna achieve or we're gonna target a reduction of CO2 of eight to 10% per full-time equivalent in this year. Looking at the external sustainability, we're going to roll out new services this year that will help our clients to become less CO2 intensive, help them reduce materials, and help them to bring a, the way towards a circular economy. We're going to present more about this in our sustainability report, which will be presented in about three weeks. And finally, people. We are a people business. We have always been and will always be a people business. So a huge focus will be on attracting and retaining the right talents. We have been awarded with a top employer brand this year, which helps us to attract the right talents further, and there will be more measures to be put in place this year. So that's for the key activities this year. Let us come to the outlook for the current year right now. Overall, and that is the good news, we can confirm the guidance that we have already pre-released at the 21st of February. We are expecting an accelerated growth momentum in the current year and a positive development in further key performance indicators. Of course, this estimation depends largely on the war in Ukraine and possible further geopolitical disputes, as well as ongoing disruptions in the global supply chain and further pandemic developments. We expect our revenues to grow in a range of around 6 to 9 percent. The adjusted EBIT is expected in a range of around 6 to 8 percent and the investments are expected to go up to a range of around 4 to 5 percent. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the short presentation of the figures for the year 2021. As a summary, we are looking with a big confidence into the current year. And should you have any question or if you require a meeting, please do not hesitate to contact me. I will be more than happy to support you in any way. Thanks again for watching this video and have a good day, everyone. Bye bye. Since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. That's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and value-added content possible for you. If you're a stock-listed company or corporation and want to find out how we at c a can make a company video with and about you, please email us at community at c